2014, a young Eve McGann captained a fantastic downside to not only win an Ulster Championship, but their first ever All-Ireland Intermediate Championship too. Six months later, she found herself in a fight to Vancouver, where then she went on to clinch her second North American title, but with the ISSC Vancouver. Neve, thanks so much for joining us. How yeah, are you? Thanks so much for having me. It's been a long Great. time. I know, too long, too long. <laughs> too long. <laughs> Neve, thanks so much for joining us today. So um, we're just basically here to hear about what's been going on over the last year. I know everybody's story is different, but can you... Tell a little bit more about how has been going on with personal life, sport and life in your career. Yeah, it's been a kind of mad year for me, I suppose. Um, in career, last February, set up the Scoliosis Academy. So I suppose I've spent most of COVID being buried in that and embracing that and enjoying that. And um, it's, yeah, spending my time just getting that side of the business and patient care and trying to change how life for scoliosis and kyphosis patients in Ireland is. So that side of things has been brilliant. I suppose sport has taken a bit of a back seat for not just me, but for most of us over here. Um, I actually quite enjoyed the championship for us last year because we had more of a chance and we even got to a final with the club because they did it kind of two tiered um, in the senior championship. So the teams that were kind of bottom of the, or the second half of the table end up getting to play in finals as well which was really nice just to try yeah that's to great and that. um, and then yeah everything else personal life's been great I suppose don't see family just as much and friends just as much but uh kept busy in all other ways because you're living in Dublin now um so your family's up and down so how has that been have you been up and down to see them <laughs> <laughs> There's the dad joke right there. <laughs> <laughs> she has been practicing that no word of a lie for the last 15 minutes before we came on the <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah, as often as I can, I suppose. Um, my sister has two little kids, so I've been using that as a bit of an excuse to get up to help out when needed. But most of the time I've been in Dublin, um, which has been really nice, like uh, because the clinic's going well and then my partner's here. So all of that side of things is, been great that's yeah. great I suppose you talked about just the championship and how it was a bit different last year but you really enjoyed it which is which is great to hear it was a different chance for everybody but um in terms of achievements like let's talk about the elephant in the room and the, the 2014 um all-ireland first time intermediate winners for a down and I believe the camogie did it the two weeks before that as well yeah it was great uh it was just feels like a totally different life now looking back at it but I feel like everything in my life had been building up to that moment and then once we won that then it was a chance I supposed to move on to other things because in 2014 and, and up until that moment life was football and football was life and you know I loved it everything about it training and the social life that came with it and the friendships and the coaches and the managers and all that football brought with it, the diet and the lifestyle and all those things, you know, life pre-2014, that's what it was all about. And then when we won in 2014, it was just that absolute high of actually achieving a childhood dream and being able to, to do that and to walk out onto Pro Park and to experience that with my best friends who were the team. Uh, yeah, it was a dream come true. And I suppose it gave me closure on, my, on that side of my GA career that I could then, you know, see what else life had to offer. Yeah, that's great to hear. And then you thought you're going to get a break, but then you moved to Vancouver and you <laughs> took up football again <laughs> with the ISC, which is how yeah, winning how we know you. <laughs> so you, you, you've talked. We know that you won a North American in Philadelphia in 2011 on your J1, and then you we the Vancouver champion. Mm. Uh, you won with sorry, lots of domestic. Um, Titans at Vancouver, but you guys went on your first year with the ISSC to, I believe, it was Chicago to win the 2015 Intermediate. So yeah. we saw pictures of that with the old yeah. jerseys, and yeah, it was like, yeah. was <laughs> great. there were some familiar faces under Watson. So, yeah. like, you know, it was great. So, how did you feel coming over to a different city and just jumping into football head first? It was so much fun. It was completely different because football at home at the time, and even now, and I'm sure you know, you're well aware of how professional it's becoming and it's not just turning up to training, it's everything you're doing 
before and after training and even on the days when you're not with the team it's all the preparation that you're meant to be doing and you should be doing and there's you know it's it's amazing when you're in it and if that's what you want to be doing but when you get to the stage where it's too much or you want to see what else life life has Mm -hmm. to offer then you kind of miss the fun of it so whenever I got to Vancouver that's what it was all about it was just so much fun and playing because you love the sport and playing because you want to teach others how to love the sport and how to enjoy the sport um, and then making so so many <laughs> friends through it which you both know um, and friends for life you know friends who just <laughs> are as mad as you are I suppose and able to enjoy life in the same way you can so uh, that's what I suppose being at the ISAC was really about for me it was just so much fun uh, and enjoying football in a way that I hadn't really had the opportunity to since I was probably a very young child. Yeah, and playing with different levels, yeah. like we're both, we both know that, like, you know, you're meeting up with random girls you don't know, yeah. it's a bit daunting at start, but, you know, everyone just kind of gels into one and then you have the likes of Neve and Lorraine yeah. Mucky and, and Natalie oh Bean God. standing on the field, Richie, and you're like, ah, uh, they're stars. And yeah. I was like, <laughs> you know, I want to do your meddling awfully, like, but. <laughs> I'm sure I had to do it for like 12 years before coming out of here and then I still Louise still shouts at me put two hands in the step <laughs> but that's the beauty of it like that's what I love so much about it is how it just brings Irish people together whenever you're abroad and all of a sudden you're just into this whole new family yeah. and you know there's a real comfort in that as well it's oh, great. and the just the place you get to visit I guess yeah. like get loads of yeah. passport but uh, you know you you get travel you get drunk you know you whatever happens on the pitch says in the pitch and that's what it's all about but uh, yeah. like, I don't think we should <laughs> say you had such like incredible success like on the pitch and like I suppose as well in like your personal and professional life, you like you were saying there, you set up a clinic last year and it's going really well. You're down in Dublin. Uh, what is a piece of advice that maybe you got when you were younger, or you got when you were in college, or on like playing with down that you kind of use in your everyday life? So something's not going great. Going okay, look, we'll go at it again another day, and we'll just keep going. Or is there something somebody once said to you that you just kind of carry with you then throughout your daily life? Um, I suppose for on the pitch or going on to the pitch, the one thing that my mum would always have said to me, be it at start of game or during a game, was it's not over till the final whistle blows. Like, do not stop, keep going. No matter what the score is, be it good or bad, you have to keep going. Um, and I suppose you can apply that into life as well. Like, you just keep going, no matter what what's getting thrown at you, be it good or bad, you can't stop putting the effort in. You have to keep going with it. So, yeah, it was a... Yeah. a to bring that into both life but always like to bring it onto the pitch as well yeah he's finished work at 4 30. that's what it's <laughs> 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 no matter what time training finishes that you keep going to some pieces get off <laughs> but how has the change been moving from vancouver because i know a lot of people are going to be looking at this mm. or maybe thinking about going home they might be obviously terrified now or yeah. maybe put off a little bit with covid and like, things are starting to look a bit brighter but how did you find settling going from Vancouver back to back home? Mm. I actually find it very easy but um, I suppose I took a good year to make up my decision about what I wanted to do and bear in mind I'm a complete home bird and when I moved to Vancouver I had my mind I'd stay for nine months (laughs) (laughs) and and I I was crying leaving telling myself you can do this for nine months and be home for Christmas yeah. So uh, I ended up staying, I think it was for nearly three and a half years, which was not part of the plan, but it was the best thing that I ever did. Um, and I had this pull all the time that I wanted to go home and that I felt like I should be at home. So there was as much fun as I was always having, there's always that underlying sense that I should be at home eventually. So when I finally decided that I was moving home, for me, it was the right choice. And I just slotted right back in. I actually, when I got home, I got home, I think at the end of May, started June, I went into railing with my parents for a couple of weeks. Oh, <laughs> oh that's no. unreal. Where, where would you bond? <clears throat> yeah, because I just felt like I'd missed time with them. And like, yeah, this is me yeah. being like, they're, you know, obviously it's by quality and not quantity of time, but we end up mm-hmm. going to have a couple of great weeks traveling. Yeah. Um, and then after that, I just enjoyed a summer off. And played football and you know spend time with family and friends which is a great way to do it if you ever do move home so just take some time off and enjoy the downtime and then I moved to Dublin which was nice because it was different for me I'd never lived there so it just was on to the next adventure 
and yeah. it just was great just uh, worked in a different clinic when I got home and the clinic that is in Pierce Street in Dublin it was brilliant the guys here I worked with were so much fun and so good and encouraging and um, just getting to play football at home again was so enjoyable and seeing everybody so for me it was a really easy transition and a really good one but yeah. the problem was that I felt like I was still of the age when I left <laughs> yeah, you just stop back in. <laughs> it was a bit like never never land like uh, yeah so I'm still trying to realize that I'm older than I am <laughs> yeah I was home at Christmas time and you know I felt like I was 25 again yeah but even a teenager to make you feel like sometimes you're like do you want, do you want toast now you can't I'm like I'm yeah, well, what? Yeah. You know, where are you going? Right. Where I'm going? What are you asking? <laughs> like, yeah. well, the guards would be asking that. I think yeah. they would now, but like. <laughs> oh, yes, they would. <laughs> <laughs> oh, would you like to add any more questions? No, I'm just an absolute all. Oh, like, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, like it's amazing just to hear your story and I suppose like you like I got on that plane and I cried the whole way to Vancouver and I was like no because I had like never done a J1 I was like I used to work down in the Gwail Talks and like Galway I wanted to move to Galway like the world <laughs> stopped after Galway like there was nowhere else <laughs> ever yes. and I came over here and I was like oh god what am I going to do I just need to like originally it was kind of like I'll be here for a year maybe two and then I'll go home um and there on Sunday I celebrated my third anniversary yeah, and I had no plans thanks very much no plans to absolutely move home at, at all and that's like it's not when you're rain of chairperson oh no that's, that's your that's... rain of terror <laughs> <laughs> I'm too nice to have be terror <laughs> but yeah like as you said like it's the family you make over here like my first day down at Camogie train and uh, Louise thought it was somebody else but started waving the hurl at me. And I was like, that's so lovely. Okay. <laughs> that, no, that's, I don't know her. <laughs> Look at you now. Look at you now. <laughs> yeah, but I was like, oh, she's lovely. And it was like that sense of like, I'm going back and I, and I was enjoying because I was terrified. Like, I wouldn't go home. Like, <laughs> my club at home, they're senior, um, they're in the senior championship in Kildare. So there's no way I'd even get near the team. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like that's something that's missing at home, actually, is we either have like Gaelic for mums that's for a very certain type of person who's at that level of life or else you have club football which is taken quite seriously but there's that gray area where there's younger yeah. people who want the social fun aspect of it and some clubs have that and others just don't and it's missing because it's yeah. like it's it is, if you want to come out to vancouver isc and start and we'll start that club here <laughs> we'll, do, we'll, we'll just have like a conveyor belt for people like coming out to get that experience and then we'll send them back to another club <laughs> yes. home with that gray area <laughs> that's brand um <laughs> no, I agree, like, for women yeah. in 2020 last year was meant to be the big year for women in sport and everything that happened so I like know. You know, it, was, it was disappointing but onwards and upwards and we'll hope, hopefully be back in co-op park watching the babies in the future yeah I can't wait to yeah. be coming yeah. back so it's great but uh Niamh, thanks so much for for taking time out of your um Wednesday Wednesday night uh, <laughs> after work I'd say you haven't had your dinner yet but uh, <laughs> we're just going to end on um a little game yeah <laughs> I'm very sorry I still can't come up <laughs> with the, the game is called give us your best dad joke in that oh. kind of accent. <laughs> this is so. terrible. This is terrible, right? But that's it's meant to be terrible, right? Yeah, it's meant to be that bad that it's good. Yeah. <laughs> so how yeah. do how do celebrities stay stay cool? How do is the celebrities stay cool? cool? I don't know. They have many fans. <laughs> Um what do you call um a woman with one leg longer than the other? Eileen. <laughs> oh God. What do you call a woman that just has the legs that are the same length? Nolene. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> what you call a woman standing between two houses? Elaine. <laughs> On that note. <laughs> <laughs>
Hey. Oh, Neve, that's been brilliant. Thanks so much for catching up with us. And yeah, it's so good to see you. Great to see ya. And look, if you ever decide you're going to come back, we're all, you're always welcome here. That's so, good. I can't and, wait to come and visit again. Yeah, definitely. And hopefully we'll get to do like a, a meet up of all the eyes to see girls yeah. at home in the future. We'll have yeah. some drinks and halfway point. I think Louise um, of Ireland said Athlone would be a I spot. literally was like, <laughs> Athlone is probably the only spot that's halfway between us all. Yeah, so, um, so we'll have to get to go up north, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll go, we'll go up and see Mandy as well up in Donegal. So, like, yeah, there you there. go. So, yeah, uh, Neve, thanks so much for your, all your time and best of luck in um, the next coming year. Okay, and best of luck yeah. with the business as well. <laughs> I'm sure to be thriving, no bother to you. Thanks, Mel. See you guys. Thanks, Neve. Bye. Bye.